Good morning, everybody. Okay, as we get organized and get settled in your spots and all those good things, I need to let you know that on Friday this week, we are going to be having an American Red Cross blood drive in this room at 10 o'clock. So yoga is meeting in the classroom. So it'll be a test of our ability to be close together, but we can do it, all right? We know how to do it and we'll get you organized so you can do it and everybody will be fine. So remember Friday in the classroom, not here. Okay, so let's all get to our starting positions. Don't forget everything I say is a suggestion. It's not a demand. So if I suggest anything that's inappropriate for your particular body, because you have arthritis, injuries, surgeries, or you're just tired, skip it. Take a little breather and then rejoin us when you're ready. All righty. So if you're sitting in a chair, move forward so that you're not leaning against the back of the chair. Put your feet flat on the floor, looking like the number 11, hip width apart, and roll your pelvis forward so you come up onto your sits bones. Tighten up your abs, lift your breastbone, ask your shoulders to go back and down. And let's close our eyes for a few seconds and take inventory. How are we doing today? How's our hearing? How's our sense of touch? How's our mood? And opening our eyes, let's extend our arms, inhale up. And then two fountain breaths. Try to keep your elbows together as long as possible. Good, release that, let that go. Let's try making our forward circle as large as we possibly can. Good morning, shoulder, time to wake up and go backwards. Good, release that one. Say good morning to your other shoulder. Get those juices flowing and reverse it. Good, release that, give everything a loosening up, take a deep breath. Ah, good, turn and look over your right shoulder. Come back to center, look over your left shoulder. Back to center, let's do some cat and cow stretches. We've got a spot for you right up here. Chin is coming forward, your belly is going backwards as you exhale down. As you inhale, lift your breastbone, look up, exhale down. You simply go back and forth at your own speed. And then come back to center and let's stir the pot. So we're pretending that our spine is a wooden spoon and the, our pelvis is the bowl and around we go. Reverse it. Good, come back to center, check in with your breastbone, make sure it's still lifted. Let's pick a few apples, reach up as tall as you can, pull an apple down, reach up again and go back and forth. You're reaching to the very top of that tree, grab those apples, they're the very best ones and bring them down. 
That's right, very top of the tree. Good, all right, release that. Give your shoulders a little wiggle. Uh, let's bring our arms behind our head. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Now, push your shoulders back, not el shoulders, elbows, elbows, back, any amount. Whatever you can achieve is good. Keep your breastbone lifted. Good, release those elbows. Take a breath. Good. Lift your breastbone, push those elbows back. Whatever you can do is sufficient. Good, relax everything, take a breath. Lift your breastbone, push your elbows back. Whatever you can do, good. Release that. Give everything a little loosening up. Take a deep breath. Ah, good. All righty. Let's do some side stretches. So put your left hand on the floor or your chair. Stretch up tall with your right arm. Lean into your left hand. Reach to the left. Look at the wall, not the floor, and breathe. Feel all those little muscles up and down your right side as they begin to open. Good, come back to neutral, right arm down, left arm stretching up tall, lean into your right hand and reach right. Once again, looking at the wall, breathe into it. Good, come back to center, left arm down, right arm reaching up. Lean into your left hand and stretch. Breathe. Good. Come back to center. Right arm down. Left arm reaching up tall. Leaning into your right hand and breathing. Good, come back to center. Give everything a loosening wiggle. Okay, take your arms left and right out of your shoulders, bend your elbows, let one hand come down and then the other one, but keep your elbows up at shoulder level. We're stretching and strengthening the muscles of your shoulders and upper back. If you want to, you can have both hands in motion simultaneously or not. And then release that, give everything a little wiggle, take a breath. Let's do the exaggerated chewing. So you know, our entire mouth opens wide and puckers up small. Chew on the left. Chew on the right. Make your chin go in a circle. Reverse it. Open wide. Pucker up. Look up. Pull your lower lip over your upper lip. Come back to neutral, take a deep breath. Ah, let that all go and check in with your face and determine how it feels. Good, let's do the seated spinal twist. Now, if you're sitting in a chair, you're already in the correct position, don't move anything. If you're on the floor, stretch your legs out, then it's right leg over left, left arm to right knee. Everybody sit up straight and tall, pivot to your right. Use your hands as you need to, to help you pivot. We want a nice vertical spine, a lifted breastbone, 
firm abs supporting your viscera and spine, which always forces little burps out of me, which is, <laughs> oh well, onward and upward. Don't forget to breathe. So now we're warmed up. Let's twist back a little bit deeper. And release it. Come back to center, a little wiggle. Now the floor, folks, left foot over right, right arm to left knee. Everybody twist to your left. Once again, use your hands to help you in your twist. Get up nice and straight and tall. If your right shoulder tries to sneak around to the left, ask it to go back to the right, and that'll help us keep your chest up and open. Don't forget to breathe. And now let's twist back a little bit deeper. and release it. Come back to center, give everything a little wiggle. So now we're going to do the frog. Now the frog you can do standing up, sitting on the floor, or sitting in a chair. So this I'm going to demonstrate how we do it in the chair today. So I'm sitting on the forward edge of my seat so that the arms don't get in my way. And I'm separating my knees wide apart Rest my hands on my knees. Now we're gonna lean forward. Keep your head and chest up while you lean forward so that you have a nice flat back and just lean as far forward as you can. And eventually your hips are going to stop you because they just don't wanna go there. When that happens, pause, breathe encouragement into your hip joints. Let them know everything's okay. Sooner or later, they'll get accustomed to this idea and begin to open. Eventually, you'll go a little bit lower. It might not be much. Don't worry about it. If you can comfortably get your palms onto the floor, go ahead and do that and release your head and neck. If you can't get your palms comfortably onto the floor, keep them on your knees. You are safer in that position and breathe. Now, as usual, you can stay as long as you wish, but if you feel you're ready to come out of it, simply make sure your hands are on your knees Pick up your head and chest first and return to vertical. Good. All right. Let's stand up. Give everything a loosening wiggle. Release your legs. Take a deep breath. So I think today is Warrior Two Day. And so today we're going to do the triangle pose. So you can either do Warrior Two or you can do the triangle pose. The triangle pose is more demanding of our balance than just warrior two. So I will show you how to do it. So separate your feet comfortably wide apart. If you are doing it in shoes, you can do it in shoes. If you are barefoot, make sure you have a mat. You need a mat. Artie, this is for you. Okay, so now that we've got our feet comfortably wide apart, rotate your left toes to the left 90 degrees. Bend your left knee over your left ankle. Your right leg is straight. Now, bring, put your hands on your hips so you know where their hips are. Bring them back to the starting position. And send your arms left and right out of your shoulders. Turn your head to the left. Look out over your left arm. Now, if you want to do the triangle pose, you lower your left arm while you raise your right arm. You can lean your left arm against your left knee if you wish. Look at the wall, not the floor. If you want to stay in 
warrior two, that's fine. Breathe into the posture. Again, you can stay as long as you wish, but if you're ready to come out of it, return to vertical, bring your arms down, step onto your left foot, give your legs a release, take a breath. Ah, good. So we're gonna do the other side, of course. So this time, when we separate our feet, we're gonna rotate our right foot to the right, 90 degrees, Bend your right knee over your right ankle. Good. Put your hands on your hips. Bring your hips back to the starting position. Take your arms left and right out of your shoulders. Turn your head to the right. This is warrior two. But of course, you may stay here or you may go into triangle pose. Lowering your right arm, raising your left arm looking at the wall and breathing. Stay as long as you like, but when you're ready to come out of it, return to vertical, arms down, step onto your right foot, give everything a loosening wiggle, take a deep breath. Ah, good. All right. Let's get into Tadasana. So we want our feet to be looking like the number 11, hip width apart. The trick for determining hip width is you put your two fists together, put them on the floor between the ball mounds of your feet, and that is your personal hip width. Good. All righty. So now, sway a little left and right. Feel what's going on at the bottom of your foot. Come back to center. Make sure your weight is evenly distributed across your foot. Pull yourself up through your legs. Pull in your abs. Lift your breastbone. Ask your shoulders to go back and down. And lift the back of your head. This is Tadasana, the mountain posture. Take a deep breath. If you want to look younger, this is the way to do it. You can throw away your wrinkle creams because now you look 10 years younger just by standing up straight. This is also good for all of your internal organs it's good for the, distribu the distribution of hormones, catalysts, blood, lymph, all of those things that have to be distributed. Let's bring our arms out, interlace your fingers and notice which one's on top, reverse, stretch, bring your hands behind your back, interlace and lift into chest expansion. Feel your pecs expanding. Take a breath. Good. Relax that. Bring your arms out again. And this time when you interlace, make sure the other finger is on top. Reverse. Stretch. Bring your hands behind your back. Interlace and lift. Breathe into the stretch. See if you can get your shoulder blades to come together. Good, release that, release your legs, take a breath. Ah, very good, okay. Let's do our inversion. <clears throat> so for those of you who have not seen this before, I'm gonna put my feet right back into Tadasana. And for those of you who know what you're doing, you can go ahead and do this. But for, for the, those of you who are new, this is what we're doing. We're going to inhale up, we're going to exhale with a flat back coming down, stretching forward out of our pelvis, then relaxing our back to hang upside down. And you just stand here, breathing encouragement into all the muscles that are 
stretching up and down your back and backs of your legs. Whether or not you can touch the floor is completely irrelevant. What's important though is relaxing your neck. If you're looking at your feet, that means your neck is holding up your head. See if you can release your neck so the top of your head is pointed at the floor. I happen to be looking at my knees. Now twist to the right, take hold of whatever part of your body is over there. It might be toes or ankles or calves or knees or thighs, who cares, grab it. Keep breathing. Come back to center, twist to the left, Take hold of whatever's over there and keep breathing. When you're ready to come out of it, come back to center, put your hands on your thighs, come up to a flat back and stand up. Good, give everything a wiggle, take a breath. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Okay, we're gonna do one of our little balance exercises. So lay out a little circle on the floor. It could be right around your chair if you want it. It's only about three or four feet in diameter. Turn to your right, walk around your little circle, taking the largest steps you can comfortably take until you get back to your starting position. When you get there, walk around your same little circle going backwards. When you get back to your starting position, turn around 180. Walk around your little circle forwards. When you get to the starting point, do it backwards. Good, all righty. So let's do the tree. We need our chairs as our safety equipment. So I want all four feet on my chair on the mat so it will not slide away from me. Okay, so. I've got my left hand available to the chair at all times. Now, find your drishti. It's a little spot on the carpet, maybe 45 degrees out in front of you, or it's a spot on the wall, whichever you want. Stare fixedly at that little spot, turn your right leg out 90 degrees and put it where you want. You can leave your toe on the floor. You can put it against your ankle, your calf, your knee you can bring it right into your groin, put it wherever you want it. Now, find your balance. When we find our balance, we're gonna use the five arm positions. Choose the one you like best. It could be hips, prayer, goddess arms, yoga mudra arms, or palms facing, pick one. Stay as long as you like, but if you're ready to come out of it, arms down, foot down, shake out your standing leg, take a breath. Okay, so reorganize yourself so that your hand is available, your right hand is available to the chair at all times. <sighs> Find your drishti. Turn your left leg out 90 degrees, park it where you want it, and then decide which of the five arm positions you like and do it. When 
when you're ready to come out of it, arms down, foot down, shake out your standing leg, give everything a wiggle, take a breath. Ah, very good. Okay. Let's do the chair. So we're going to use our chair again as safety equipment, but we're not going to touch it. We're going to stand immediately in front of the chair. So we're going to put our feet back into Tadasana, and we're simply going to bend our knees. But when we bend our knees, some people habitually bring their knees together. Don't do that. Keep your knees lined up over your ankles at all times. That'll lessen the stress on your hips and knees. So put your hands on your hips, bend your knees, stick your butt out so you have a nice flat back. You can be as close to or far away from the chair as you wish and breathe. This is called the chair. And straighten your legs. Give everything a wiggle, shake out your legs, take a breath. Ah, good. Well, we're gonna do it one more time. Now, when we do it, you can either keep your hands on your hips as usual, or if you want more of a challenge, raise them above your head and bend your knees. Breathe into it. When you're ready, Stand up, give yourself a little wiggle, take a breath, shake out your legs. Ah, very good. Okay. So we're going to do Bernice's favorite move. So once again, we're going to need our chair. Move your chair to the left so it's available to your left hand. Let me demonstrate this for the new folks that we've got. Now, you can either keep your left hand on the chair or you can put it on your left hip. Step forward with your left foot. Take your right arm up. Notice that my left knee is bent. My right knee is straight. I'm going to bring my arm down, straightening my left knee, bending my right knee as I bow. And then I'm going to reverse the entire thing to the starting position. Okay, are we all with me? Okay, here we go. This does a wonderful job of stirring the fluid in our balance canals. And for those of you who have been doing yoga for a long time, if you can coordinate your breathing in time to the motion, so much the better. And bring your right arm down, step onto your left foot, shake them out, give everything a wiggle, take a breath. Ah, good. We're going to turn around so our right hand is available to the chair at all times. Step forward with your right foot, your right knee is bent, your left knee is straight. Bring your left arm up, look at it, bring it down, straightening your right knee, bending your left knee, and bowing. Reverse the whole magilla and just go back and forth at your own pace. And then step onto your right foot. Give everything a little loosening wiggle. Take a breath. Ah, good. All right. So let's sit in our chairs. Stick one leg out, point and flex. This is a good opportunity to firm up your abs. Draw a circle with that foot. Reverse it. 
Good. Stick out the other leg. Point and flex. R do a circle. Reverse that circle. Good, put those feet down. Now stand up and look down at your toes. This is where we really foul up our brains. Look down at your right foot, pick up your right big toe, keep the other toes on the floor, put it down. Now pick up the four right toes, keep your big toe on the floor. It's hard, go back down, everybody down. Pick up your right big toe again, put it down. Pick up the four little toes, put it down. Good, all right. On the left foot, pick up the left big toe, keep the other ones on the floor. Good, put it down. Keep, pick up the left little toes, keep the big one on the floor, put them down. Pick up the left big toe again, put it down. Pick up the little, whoops, pick up the little toes again. There you go. Good, all righty. Well, that's it for the first half hour of yoga. We're about to get down on the floor. And I know half of you aren't going to join us on the floor. So don't forget Friday, the American Blood Red Cross will be doing a blood drive in this room at 10. We will be in the classroom, okay? So have a great week, namaste. Okay, so let's get down into tabletop. The idea with tabletop is to spread your hands out as broadly as they can go underneath your shoulders. Now, Dawn, you're gonna skip this, of course. Turn your right hand out 90 degrees and now move your body above your right hand in a circle. You're giving a gentle stretch to the tendons of your hand. Now, Turn your right hand to the right another 90 degrees. Now your fingers are pointing at your right knee. And again, draw a circle with your body above your hand and feel the stretch. Be very gentle, very slow. Reverse your circle. Good, pick up your hand and put it back where it belongs. Good, all right. Take your left hand, rotate it to the left 90 degrees. Draw a little circle above your left hand. Reverse it. Okay, now turn your left hand to the left 90 degrees again. So your left hand, your left fingers are pointing at your left knee and draw a little circle above your hand, reverse that. And then bring your hand back to normal. Good, let's curl our toes under, lift your butt up to the ceiling and push your shoulders back as close to your knees as possible. Make sure you release your neck so you're looking at your feet and not your hands. Breathe into the posture. The important part of this is keeping your shoulders as close to your knees as possible, whether or not you choose to flex one knee and then the other, or to stick a foot up to the ceiling is window dressing. Breathe into it. Now you can stay as long as you like, but if you're ready to come out of it, touch your knees down, big toes together, knees an inch or two apart, and forehead on the floor in child pose. However, if this does not work for you, 
because you have sinus issues, knee issues, or whatever, roll over onto your back, pull your knees up onto your chest, and that will be just fine. Take a couple of nice deep breaths. Let all of that work and effort go. Alrighty, we're going to do the lunge. So we want to bring our left foot forward in between our hands. You can either sneak your left toes forward or push your right knee back. We want your left shin vertical and we want you to be feeling a little groin stretch. And if you bounce a little bit, you can explore that. Now, this is the low lunge position. If you would like to feel what a high lunge feels like, curl your right toes under, push backward through your right heel. This is the high lunge. But this takes way more strength and balance than we need to do. So bring your knee back to the floor, put your left elbow on your left knee, bring your right hand up to your left knee, look up and decide which of the five arm positions you'd like to use. And breathe. Bring your hands back to your knee, back to the floor, and slowly move your pelvis backwards. Your left knee is straightening, your left toes come off the floor as you bow over your left knee. You should feel a tremendous hamstring stretch. If you want more stretch, lower your head. If you want less stretch, raise it. Breathe into the position. And when you want to come out of it, begin to bend your left knee, your toes come back to the floor. Take your left hand, move it to the right side of your left foot, bring your left knee behind you, bring your right foot forward. Good, all righty. Once again, we want a nice vertical right shin. If you would like to feel the high lunge, curl your left toes under, push backward through your left heel, and there we are. Put your left knee back on the floor, bring your left, or your right elbow up to your right knee, bring your left hand up, make yourself vertical, look up and decide which arm position you'd like to use. Take a breath. When you're ready to come out of it, bring your arms to your knee, to the floor, and begin to move your pelvis backwards as your right knee straightens, your right toes are lifting as you bow over your right knee. Breathe into it. Come out of it, move your pelvis forward, your right knee bends, your toes come back to the floor, pick up your right arm, move it to the left side of your right foot, bring your knee behind you, lay down on your back, pull your knees up onto your chest, close your eyes, give your knees a hug, 
and let all of that work and effort go. That is definitely a posture that requires a lot of balance. So there were a lot of muscles working without your conscious thought. Let your hands come down to the floor and draw a circle on the ceiling with your knees together. Feel how lovely the massage for your lower back is. Reverse the circle. Put your knee, put your feet on the floor. We're going to do the bridge. So your feet should be hip width apart. Bring them as close to your butt as conceivable. Roll your pelvis left and right so that you're partially covering your lower arms. Tuck your pelvis, put it down. Tuck it a little bigger, put it down. Keep going each time. A little bigger tuck. When you get all the way up onto your shoulders, roll your shoulders behind you, interlace your fingers, and push your pelvis as close to the ceiling as you can get it. Breathe. This is a wonderful thing for your core muscles. Your thighs are working, your butt's working. And you're ready to come out of it. Release your hands, bring them in an arc above your head and slowly lower your vertebra one at a time. When your hips are down, you're done. Pull your knees up onto your chest, give them a hug. Take a couple of nice deep breaths and let that work and effort go. Notice which parts of you are tingling from all of that exertion and extra blood flow. In yoga, we strive to be connected, our mind to our body. So we really want to focus on our bodily sensations. Okay, now put your hands on your knees as though you had a mitt and you were holding a baseball. Now we're going to do circles with our knees. They're together right now. Circle them apart so that they come back together again and apart and back together again. This is a lovely thing to stimulate our hips. Now bring your knees together again. And this time we wanna do circling individually, but we want to go in the opposite direction. So push your knees so that each one is going in the opposite direction, but they're still starting together, circling apart and coming together. Good, now come back together 
push one knee away, bring it back, push the other knee and then bring it back and go back and forth with each knee. So you look like you've got pistons going. Good. Now put your hands on the floor, straighten your legs both together and keeping your feet together, draw a small circle on the ceiling with your feet. You're doing it with your entire leg. Reverse it. This should be working your abs pretty well. Now open your feet wide apart. Bring your arms through. Head lift is optional. Breathe. Put your arms back on the floor. Bring your legs together. Bend your knees. Put your feet on the floor. Take a deep breath. Slide your legs out straight and let go. That's a lovely exercise for you your lower abs, and hopefully they feel very stimulated right now. Close your eyes and just breathe and let go. That was work, this is rest. So we're about to do the knee down twist. So extend your arms left and right out of your shoulders. Bring your right knee up, roll it across your body to the left, roll your head to the right and keep your right shoulder on the floor. If you wish, you can take your right hand to touch your left hand twice before you settle into the posture. Some people like to put their left hand on their right knee, take deep breaths and melt. Notice which parts of you are stretching the most. Give them the encouragement they need to let go. Now make sure both hands are on the floor, roll your head to center, and then roll onto your back. Get back into good alignment, straighten out your clothing. Pick up your left bent knee, roll it across your body to the left, roll your head to the left, keep your left shoulder on the floor. If you want, you can take your left hand to touch your right palm twice before you settle into the posture. Some people like to put their right hand on their left knee. Make sure your eyes are closed. Take a deep breath. And let go.
stay as long as you like, but if you're ready to come out of it, put both hands on the floor, roll your head to center, and then roll onto your back. Put yourself back into good alignment, pull your knees up onto your chest, give them a hug, and feel your back as it reorganizes itself. Take deep breaths. Because now it's time for deep relaxation. So if you have socks, sweaters, pillows, cushions, blankets, anything you need to stay warm and comfy while you rest, this is the time to put them on. Because now it's the time to reorganize yourself on the floor in the world's most comfortable position. When you land, be sure to close your eyes. That turns off 30% of your brain. <clears throat> Thank you to whoever turned off the lights. Take a couple of nice deep breaths to help you settle in and settle down. We're going to do a series of things that are designed to help you let go. Squeeze your toes together into a fist. Release them. Squeeze your feet together into two fists. Release them. Flex your calves into a hard rock. Release them. Squeeze your thighs so that they are a tidy little group. Release them. Tighten your gluteus maximus. Release it. Tighten your abs. Release it. Tighten your hands into fists. Release them. Tighten your arms. Release them. Tighten your shoulders. Release them. Pucker up your face. Release it. Take a deep breath. And just melt into the floor. And now it's time to wiggle your toes and fingers, any loosening motions which might feel good. 
roll to one side, come up to a seated position, put your hands together in prayer position, sit up straight and tall, close your eyes, lower your head, and give thanks for this day. lifting our heads and opening our eyes, we can say, Namaste. 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 I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you back in the classroom on Friday, 10 o'clock, as usual. You're welcome. Thank you.